queens of the world. Queen Liliuokalani of Hawaii. Liliuokalani was the first queen regnant and last monarch of the islands of Hawaii. She fought to keep her country and people free from the conquest of British and American colonists, and preserved her culture and history through music. Thank you to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. Liliu Loloku Walania Kamakaeha was born on September 2, 1838, in her maternal family's grass hut at the base of Punchbowl Crater on the island of Oahu. Per Hawaiian custom, she was named after an event linked to her birth. The day she arrived, the queen had a painful eye infection, so her melodic name means smarting, tearful, burning pain, sore eyes. She was baptized by the missionaries who had arrived on the island only 18 years earlier, and given the Christian name Lydia. Her birth parents, Analia Kiyokolaholi and Caesar Kapaakia, were important nobles and relatives of the ruling family, Per the Hawaiian tradition of Hanai, a kind of informal adoption, she was given at birth to an even higher-ranking couple, Abner Paki and Laura Konia, and raised alongside their daughter, Bernice Pauhai. Liliu still had a close relationship with her birth parents and siblings. In childhood, she fell from a vine she was climbing and broke her leg. She walked with a limp for the rest of her life. At four, she began attending the royal school with her highborn relatives. The school's 16 pupils were all eligible for the throne. There she received an excellent but strict education from American missionaries. The children were taught reading, writing, arithmetic, geometry, algebra, physics, geography, history, and music. The school had a room set up like a formal parlor where the children were given etiquette lessons on how to behave like proper Victorians. Liliu wrote of the harshness of the boarding school, corporal punishment, and being sent to bed hungry. When she was 10, a measles epidemic claimed the lives of some of her classmates, including her little sister, Kaimina Aoa. Back in 1778, when British Captain James Cook first arrived in Hawaii, the island had 300,000 native inhabitants. But more and more Britons and Americans followed him, bringing diseases against which the native Hawaiians had no acquired immunity. 75 years later, only 71,000, 23% of the original population remained alive. The Britons and Americans were taking Hawaiian land, too, building profitable sugar plantations and importing laborers from Asia, who were treated little better than slaves. While Liliu was in school, King Kamehameha III set in motion the Great Mele, a plan to divide up the land among his people. But the settlers turned it to their advantage and seized even more property. Shortly before Captain Cook landed in Hawaii, his ship hit the Great Barrier Reef and nearly sank. How would history have gone differently if his voyage had ended then and he hadn't claimed Australia and Hawaii for the British? The fascinating series The Butterfly Effect has an episode exploring just this question, and many more like, what if the Black Plague hadn't decimated Europe in the 14th century? And what would the civil rights movement have been without Martin Luther King? You can find this fresh perspective on world history and so many other engrossing educational documentaries on CuriosityStream. There are thousands of exclusive originals and nonfiction titles on history, science, nature, technology, society, and lifestyle for hungry brains of all ages. And all this knowledge is incredibly affordable. Go to curiositystream.com slash lindsayholiday or use promo code lindsayholiday to save 25%. That means you'll pay only $14.99 for a full year of unlimited access to Curiosity Stream and a whole world of knowledge for your curious mind to explore. 
And now, back to history. At 15, Liliu finished school with excellent marks. When the king died, her cousin and former classmate ascended the throne as King Kamehameha IV. He announced his intentions to marry his fellow classmate and childhood sweetheart, Emma Rook, whose grandfather had been British. Many Hawaiians were outraged and insisted that he marry Liliu instead, as she was the highest-ranking single woman who was a full-blooded Hawaiian. Despite the upset, Liliu remained a close friend and confidant of the new queen, Emma, and served as a maid of honor at the couple's wedding. As part of the royal court, Liliu frequented balls and dinners and experienced some of the happiest and most carefree years of her life. Most of the members of the young royal court had been brought up at the royal school and taught to embrace Western culture and the Victorian way of life. She and Queen Emma raised funds to establish the Queen's Hospital, which is still a major teaching hospital in Hawaii. As the highest-ranking single woman in the royal family, Liliu was a hot commodity. Many young men courted her with a variety of intentions. An American merchant came on to her when she was just 15 years old, while he was staying as a guest of her parents. But she rebuffed his advances. She was briefly engaged to Hawaiian noble William Lunalilo, with whom she shared a love of music. He had been betrothed since childhood to the king's sister, Princess Victoria, but he and the king had had a falling out. He proposed to Liliu, but she later broke off the engagement. She became romantically involved with American John Owen Dominus, a secretary to the king, whom she had known since they were children, when he watched her at her school from his family home across the street. During a court outing, John was trying to impress Liliu and was thrown from his horse and injured but he insisted on seeing her home before his broken leg was attended to. After that gallant act, the couple became engaged. They married shortly after her 24th birthday at the home of her older sister. Liliu moved into her new husband's family mansion, Washington Place. They shared the home with his widowed mother, Mary, who was against her son's marriage to a Hawaiian and treated her new daughter-in-law with cruelty. Liliu and Mary squabbled repeatedly over issues large and small, and John did not come to his wife's defense. He was too busy conducting numerous affairs. Liliu was miserable in her marriage, and as she and her husband were living apart, she mourned her childlessness. Liliu attended classes at Oahu College. She learned Greek, Latin, and French, and wrote poetry and music. King Kamehameha IV died at the age of 29, and his brother became Kamehameha V. The new king was not an Anglophile, and he wanted to stop playing God Save the Queen at court events. So he requested that Liliu write a new national anthem for Hawaii. She composed Hemele Lauai Hawaii, which was used for the next decade. Liliu, her sister Pauhai, and Princess Victoria established a female-led society for the relief of the elderly and ill. Through his wife's connections, John Dominus was able to secure the position of governor of Oahu and Maui. His home is the Hawaiian governor's mansion today. Liliu did well as a politician's wife, but the marriage remained deeply unhappy. When she inherited a house in Waikiki from her grandfather, she moved out of John's home. On the day she moved in, she danced through the rooms singing, My Own House, My Own House. In 1869, Queen Victoria's second son, Alfred Duke of Edinburgh, visited Hawaii. Liliu entertained the prince with a traditional Hawaiian luau at her home. In 1872, King Kamehameha V fell ill. On his deathbed, he asked Pauhai to be his heir, but she refused, and he died without a successor. So the legislature elected Liliu's old fiancé, William, King Lunalilo. He was charming and well-liked at first, 
but he began negotiations with the United States for them to use the Delta of the Pearl River as a naval base. Hawaiians were infuriated, and the king, who was known as Whiskey Bill, turned back to drink. He died a year later, again without a successor. The legislature once again needed to elect a new monarch, and now there were no more male members of the House of Kamehameha. There were two leading candidates for the throne. Dowager Queen Emma, the widow of King Kamehameha IV, was seen as a continuation of the old dynasty and was favored by native Hawaiians. The British also backed her as she was one quarter British and part of the old Anglophile regime. The Americans wanted Liliu's birth brother, David Kalakaua, who was more favorable to the sugar plantation owners and to allowing the U.S. to park their warships in the Pearl River. British and American battleships, packed with troops, waited offshore to push their nation's interests. The vote came in 39-6 to 6 in favor of King David Kalakaua. Riots broke out. Buildings were burned, threats were made against the life of the new king, and the American troops came in to enforce the transition of power. Many of Queen Emma's supporters were arrested, and the incident caused a rift between her and Liliu's family. King Kalakaua created his siblings, Liliu and Miriam Likalika, princesses. And as he had no children of his own, he named his brother Prince William Liliaohoku his heir. Liliu's closest friend, her sister, Princess Likalika, gave birth to a daughter, Kaiulani. One of John Dominus's office workers died in childbirth and left behind an orphan daughter. Against her husband and brother's objections, Liliu adopted and raised the child, named Lydia Aholo. While on a trip riding on horseback, Liliu witnessed two lovers embracing farewell, and she was inspired to write the most famous Hawaiian song, Aloha Oi, Farewell to Thee. This lovely, bittersweet melody has become musical shorthand for the beautiful islands, and has been played in Looney Tunes, Lilo and Stitch, and covered by Elvis Presley. Liliu's brother, Prince William Liliaihoku, died of rheumatic fever at the age of 22. The king had no more living brothers, so as his eldest sister, Liliu, was designated heir. Her brother insisted that she change her name to the more formal Liliukalani, meaning smarting of the royal ones. King Kalakaua decided to leave Hawaii and become the first monarch to circumnavigate the globe. He left Liliukalani as regent under the direction of his council, made up primarily of white businessmen. She refused the council's oversight and demanded that her brother give her the right to govern on her own, to which he eventually agreed. Shortly after his departure, Oahu experienced a smallpox epidemic. The princess worked fast, closed the ports, quarantined the island, and opened a hospital. She was able to keep the dreaded disease from spreading to the other islands, and won the admiration of her people. But plantation owners objected when the closed ports hit their wallets. They tried to circumvent the quarantine and Liliukulani stood up to them. Next, Manalova volcano began erupting on the big island and threatening the nearby inhabitants. The regent ordered the construction of barriers and ditches to divert lava flows away from the city of Hilo, saving it from destruction. The princess made a visit to Kaluapapa leper settlement and was so overcome that she was unable to deliver her planned speech. She knighted Father Damien, who ran the settlement, and established a hospital there. While Liliu was hard at work governing Hawaii, King Kalakaua attended the first state dinner at the White House with President Chester A. Arthur. He met Queen Victoria in London and visited Italy and Egypt. All the while, newspapers followed his adventures and speculated that he was looking to sell his kingdom to the highest bidder. The United States made it clear that they had dibs. 
When he returned a year later, he thanked his sister for her service and dismissed her from further involvement in government affairs. Out of power, she went back to work improving the lives of her people. She founded a bank for women and a society which educated disadvantaged girls. She also adopted two sons, Joseph, the child of two of her Hawaiian servants, and John, the child of her husband and one of her own maids. King Kalakaua threw himself an elaborate and exceedingly expensive coronation. He built the Aiwani Palace to emulate those he had seen in Europe. It had plumbing and electricity a decade before the White House in Washington, D.C. did. His extravagant lifestyle dug the king even further in debt with the sugar barons. In the span of three years, Liliuokalani lost her three closest friends. Her Hanai sister, Pauhai, died of breast cancer. Dowager Queen Emma of a series of strokes. A large school of red awio fish was seen off the coast of Hawaii. This was an ancient omen that foretold the death of a member of the royal family. A few days later, Liliuokalani's best friend, her little sister, Likalika, died at 36 of an unknown malady. She called her 12-year-old daughter, Kaulani, to her deathbed and prophesied that she would leave Hawaii for a long time, never marry, and never become queen. Liliuokalani was devastated at the losses and she fell into a deep depression. Looking for a way to cheer his sister, the king offered to send her to London for Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee. She left Hawaii for the first time in her life, along with her sister-in-law, Queen Kapiolani. They visited San Francisco, Boston, New York City, and met President Grover Cleveland at the still gas-lit White House. In London, they had an audience with Queen Victoria, who greeted them warmly, though they were met with curiosity and racism by many others. They attended many of the Queen's Jubilee celebrations, but cut their holiday suddenly short when news of the crisis at home reached them. The Hawaiian League, a militia of thousands of mostly white businessmen led by Sanford Dole, had organized a coup d'etat against the king. Fearing for his life, he had barricaded himself in the palace. He was eventually forced at gunpoint to sign what became known as the 1887 Bayonet Constitution. The document gave away all of his power, making him a figurehead, and took away voting rights from everyone who didn't own at least $3,000 worth of property, thus disenfranchising nearly all of the native Hawaiians and Asian workers. Kalakua was sent by his new puppet masters to the United States to negotiate better tariff terms for sugar exports. While in California, he suffered a stroke and died at the age of 54. His body was brought home aboard the USS Charleston. On January 29, 1891, Liliuokalani became the first Queen Regnant of Hawaii at the age of 52. She named her niece, Kaulani, as her heir. Her husband, John Dominus, was granted the title Prince Consort and was restored to the governorship of Oahu. Though the couple had long lived separately, she valued him as a political advisor. But John died just seven months after her ascension, and she mourned him, noting the irony that God had taken him from her just as she finally needed him. She appointed her sister, Lika Lika's widower, Archibald Claycorn, as governor, and he advised her that she would have a much happier and longer life if she didn't meddle in politics. The queen had no intention of following his suggestion. She dismissed her brother's cabinet of white businessmen and appointed her own advisors. The sugar barons wanted to abolish the monarchy and have Hawaii annexed by the United States. This way, they could avoid foreign export tariffs and significantly increase their profits, which had fallen 44% in five years. Liliuokalani proposed a new constitution to replace the Bayonet Constitution. 
it would restore many of the monarch's powers and give the right to vote to all male citizens, but not to foreigners. In response, the sugar barons formed a committee of safety, which publicly called the new constitution greedy, tampering, and revolutionary. They gave speeches and spread rumors among the white population that the native people were planning to rise up and slaughter them. All the while, they secretly plotted to depose or assassinate the queen. Her supporters formed the Committee of Law and Order, and the two sides prepared for violence to begin. The U.S. envoy, John Stevens, who was pro-annexation, requested that the USS Boston deploy Marines to keep the peace. No clash took place, but the American soldiers intimidated Liliuokalani's supporters from coming to her defense. On January 17, 1893, the chairman of the Committee of Safety stood on the steps of the government building and declared the monarchy abolished because the queen had attempted to disenfranchise the quarter of voters who owned nine-tenths of the land. Sanford Dole was appointed president. Liliuokalani refused to abdicate. She protested the provisional government, but stated that she would yield her power until such time as the government of the United States, once presented with the facts of the coup, undid the illegal actions of its representatives and restored her authority. She took her petition, signed by 95% of Native Hawaiians, to Washington and presented her case to President Grover Cleveland. An investigator was sent to Hawaii, and based on his report, U.S. Envoy John Stevens was relieved of his post. Cleveland sided with Liliuokalani and vowed to support her reinstatement as queen if she would grant amnesty to the Americans who had overthrown her. She refused, demanding the death penalty for her usurpers. Her extreme stance turned the U.S. government against her, and Congress ruled all parties involved in the coup, except the Queen, not guilty. After a failed uprising against the new Republican government, firearms were found in Liliuokalani's home. She was brought before a military tribunal and sentenced to five years hard labor which was commuted to house arrest in the upper floors of the Iowani Palace. She officially abdicated, stating that she herself would have chosen death over surrender, but she signed to save the lives of her supporters who were facing execution. During her imprisonment, the former queen embroidered a story quilt of her reign and downfall. She continued to write music, composing and adapting many ancient Hawaiian songs, including the Kumulipo, the creation chant, which had been passed down orally for generations. She wanted to preserve the history and traditions of her people as she saw her culture being swallowed up before her eyes. She was forbidden to read newspapers, but her friends brought her fresh-cut flowers wrapped in newsprint. She welcomed many friends and well-wishers, but she grew embittered at the Presbyterian Church, to which she had been devoted her entire life, as not a single member bothered to visit her. She converted to Anglicanism. After two years of captivity, President Dole granted the former queen a full pardon, and she felt a great inclination to go abroad. She visited California and her husband's relatives in Boston. She was enchanted by her first sight of snow in the Rocky Mountains. And she wrote her memoir, Hawaii Story by Hawaii's Queen. Meanwhile, the Republican government was again broaching annexation to the U.S. government. They presented President Benjamin Harris with a proposal which included a lifetime pension of $20,000 a year for Queen Liliuokalani and a one-time payment of $150,000 to Princess Kaiolani. But Native Hawaiians were strongly opposed to annexation and completely losing the diminished sovereignty of their nation. Liliuokalani and Kaiolani, fresh from boarding school in England, went to Washington, D.C. to campaign against annexation. 
they managed to convince 54 U.S. senators to vote no, successfully defeating the bill. But a few days later, the USS Maine exploded in Havana Harbor, and the Spanish-American War began. Part of the war took place in the Spanish colony of the Philippines, and the U.S. wanted a mid-Pacific naval base. So the job that was started by conversion, colonization, sugarcane, and a coup was finished by war. The islands of Hawaii were annexed by the United States of America on July 12, 1898. The new treaty offered no compensation to Liliuokalani or the other royals, and it seized the land owned by the monarchy. Sanford Dole invited Mrs. Lydia Dominus to the annexation ceremony, during which the Hawaiian flag was lowered and cut into pieces, and the flag of the United States was raised over Iowani Palace. The queen refused to attend as did most native Hawaiians. The following year, after riding her horse through a rainstorm, Princess Kaiulani caught a chill and died of inflammatory rheumatism at the age of 23. Liliuokalani returned to Washington to sue the U.S. government for compensation for the crowned lands they had stolen from her. Politicians offered her empty promises and her American lawyer tried to con her. But she persisted, and after nine years, she finally began to receive a pension, which was a fraction of her former wealth. She spent her final years living in her husband's former home, Washington Place. She suffered from cancer, paralysis of the legs, and Alzheimer's. But she was surrounded by supporters who continued to call her Queen Liliuokalani, even though that name was forbidden and she was supposed to be addressed as Mrs. Lydia Dominus. Both of her adopted sons, John and Joseph, died before her. But her daughter, Lydia Aholo, became a teacher of the native Hawaiian language and lived to the age of 101. Liliuokalani died on November 11, 1917, age 79. She was given a state funeral over which thunder and lightning reigned, a powerful omen in Hawaiian culture. As the coffin of the last monarch of Hawaii was carried through the streets, her people sang her song, Aloha Oi, Farewell to Thee. She left her wealth to the Queen Liliuokalani Trust, which continues to support orphans and poor children to this day. In 1959, Hawaii became the 50th U.S. state, gaining voting rights for Hawaiian citizens. In 1993, the U.S. Congress passed a resolution apologizing for and acknowledging the illegality of the seizure of Hawaii. Strong movements continue for the legal recognition of Native Hawaiians and independence for the islands. Queen Liliuokalani remains a powerful symbol of culture, strength, and freedom to the Hawaiian people. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.